So speaking at a youth uh, meeting, uh, mostly college students, I enjoy speaking to college students and, and I mean any students. Uh, the, the window is mostly 13 to 23. I, you know, working with high school, I'm sorry, middle school, high school and college students. Those are three groups of people I enjoy speaking to, partly because they're young and they have the future ahead of them. And I want to encourage them to make the most of the life that God has given them. And one of the questions that came up, and actually what I'm going to do this week is I'm going to try and post maybe one question a day or two questions a day. Uh, uh, some of the questions that students students are asking. And one of the questions is, what is a good way to go about studying the Bible? What is a good way uh, to go about studying the Bible? So I want to share with you part of what I, uh, I thought about a few years ago when somebody made a comment to the effect that they were more of a New Testament Christian, so they didn't read the Old Testament essentially. And that got me thinking about what could happen if you never read the Old Testament. And I realized it's almost like eating only certain nutrients and ignoring other nutrients. So you will, I mean, you will grow, but you, you would be missing out on something. So I want to share with you one way that I encourage people to look at studying the Bible. And, and especially, here's why this is important. So, so this, um, you know, month of June into July, there's been basketball for those who watch NBA basketball and so on. Um, I personally don't have time to watch any sport for this. Essentially, I mean, if Nigeria makes it to the finals in soccer or something in the Olympics, I, I'll probably watch it. Um, and I'm hopeful, you know, Nigeria won the Olympics in 1996. So that's it's possible. And that could happen again. Actually, I don't even know if they're in the Olympics for soccer. I better go back and check. But my point, though, is that we have the Olympics coming up. We have NBA basketball, uh, you know, the league. We have all uh, Wimbledon is going to happen, you know, tennis. And so there's all these things happening. So I want to encourage you in the midst of all these things happening. Don't neglect studying the Bible and making time to study God's Word. That's important. There's so much that can distract us. So we need to make sure we make time to study God's Word. So here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. If you're looking for a good way to study the Bible, uh, I'm going to give you a recommendation. There's already a plan that is typed out by uh, Robert McShayan. You can use that plan if you want. Let me know. Just email me or let me know if you want that link. But here's what I recommend. I recommend uh, the Balanced Diet Bible Plan, which is what I put together a few years ago. And here's what it looks like. Now, it depends on how much time you're reading the Word. Let's say, let's say you, were, you had an hour to read the Bible, for example. You can just choose to read a chapter or two from the New Testament and a chapter from the Old Testament. That's fine. But here's one recommendation. Imagine if you read one chapter from the book of Psalms. When you start your time of studying the Bible, let's say in the morning you're about to read and pray. Imagine if you, or, or whenever you're studying the scriptures, imagine you read a chapter from Psalms, right? Because it teaches us how to pray in the book of Psalms. A lot of the Psalms teach us to pray. Sorry, a fly came by. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, imagine if, uh, so, you, so you read from the book of Psalms, that's number one. Number two, maybe a proverb, right? You know, maybe one of the proverbs. You know, there's 31 chapters you can read. For example, today is the 27th of, of June. So maybe Proverbs 27 today on Psalm 1. So imagine you do those two first, right? Or, or, or you do the Psalm and then you do the proverb maybe in the evening. That's fine. And then imagine if you move in and read from the Gospels. You read a chapter from the Gospels. And imagine if you read a chapter from the Epistles. So maybe you read from Matthew chapter 1. So you read Psalm 1. Matthew 1, and then maybe you go to the epistles, right? The letters, the, let's say the Acts of the Apostles and the epistles, and maybe you read a chapter from Ephesians chapter 1. So now you've read th three chapters, a psalm, a gospel uh, chapter, and an epistle. So you've gone to three different genres, right? And then imagine if you go to, um, so, so you have psalms, epistles, gospels, and then imagine if you add on a Old Testament, maybe the prophets, maybe Isaiah chapter 1. So now you've gotten four different genres from the Bible. And then maybe in the evening, you can just read like Genesis through, right? let's say you're reading through the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 1, or a chronological plan in the evening, and then your Proverbs. So here's the six, I call it the six pieces, a psalm, a gospel chapter, an epistle chapter, and then uh, a proverb, uh, then you read the prophets, and then you read chronologically through the Bible. If you do that, you will have all the bases covered. You will read through the Bible every year, and you will understand more and more of the connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament. This is a suggestion. It might be a lot to take on at once, but maybe just start by doing one epistle and one gospel. Just do that for the next month or two. Uh, well, you know, read through the epistles from start from maybe Acts chapter one. Again, Acts of the Apostles and the epistles are a category. I'm putting them together. Just read from Acts chapter one all the way to Revelation and then read from Matthew one all the way to the end of John. So basically you read through the Gospels and the epistles and the Acts of Apostles. That's a great start. And then maybe do the Old Testament after that. Let me know if you think that it's reasonable to do all six genres in a day 
or in a week or instead to just focus on the epistles and the gospels first and the old testament i'd love to hear what you think about that and then maybe i'll re i'll, I'll write this plan in different formats and depending on what you you know how you want to approach it you can um, look at what works in your schedule. But I highly encourage you to make time to build the habit of studying the scriptures, to grow in your understanding of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And every time you're reading the Bible, remember that it's helping in renewing your mind and teaching you how to think more like Christ. So all the best as you study scriptures. Remember, in the midst of all that's going on, make sure you make time to read the scriptures. God bless and have a great day.